Hi, my name is Kyle Lickenville. I work in the ichthyology department as an imaging specialist and curatorial assistant. Today I'll be talking to you about how we collect our specimens and how we are able to take those specimens and some of the different ways that we're able to use them and the ways that we can kind of extend their usefulness to, to science. So starting in the prep room here, this is where all the fish come back to the academy from the field. So we'll bring the fish in, the fish will be divided into collection events. We call that a lot. So if we cast a net, we bring up a bunch of fish, all those fish are kept together and given the same field number, as well as all of the collection data that goes along with them. Once they come back here, they're separated, identified, and then put into individual jars and cataloged into our collection. Uh, this one here was actually recently collected in the Wissahickon Creek. It's a rainbow trout. From the label, I can tell this is a rainbow trout, Oncorhynchus mycus, collected in North America and Pennsylvania in the Wissahickon Creek at the Germantown Avenue Bridge. Uh, it was collected on April 12th, 2020, and collected by Mark Sabay and his daughter, Sophia. Um, so from that, we, we have a lot of the information that we need for the fish. And this is one way that we can use information from our collections um, in our research. So in addition to dealing with our full specimens when we bring them back from the field, we're also dealing with tissue samples that were collected. Because we do a lot of molecular work with tissues from our fish in the collection, where we sequence the DNA and see how they are related to each other based on the molecules and not just the morphology. So our tissue samples are actually cataloged separately from the specimens. They still reference back to the specimens, but they have their own number and are stored in small vials in, a, in deep freeze storage upstairs. Now we're in our photo lab and x-ray lab. So what we're gonna do here is we've got some specimens. When they were collected, tissue was taken. So we, we already have that component of it. Now, one of the easiest ways that we can share our specimens with other researchers, especially those that can't make it here to the academy, is to shoot photographs and take x-rays. Because with a photograph, they can look at all the external morphology, the characteristics on the outside of the fish, and as long as we've got a scale in there, they can also potentially do some measurements off of those as well. They can also use a radiograph to look at some of the bones, count vertebrae, um, count fin rays, things like that, and get a lot of valuable information out of the specimens that way. All right, so I've selected a specimen that when it was collected in the field, there were some tissue samples taken. So not only will we have the molecular data, but we can then take that specimen and start to look at the morphology, the, the characteristics on the outside. And the easiest way that we can share those specimens with, our, with other researchers who may not be able to come to the academy is to take photographs and x-rays and send them via email so they can uh, take a look at the specimens. That, that way they can sometimes decide if they need to borrow the specimen, uh, where we would pack it up and actually just send it in the mail. Or if there's so much material that they just want to come here, plan a trip, and, and come see the, the material for themselves. Um, so here I've got set up uh, one of these tiny little fish in a, in a squeeze tank. So this is a tank filled with water. Um, in the tank is a small pane of glass that actually squeezes the fish against the, the outside of the tank. Then we can set our camera up and get our uh, fairly high resolution photos with, with just a, a simple lens like this one. Um, what we do is we usually do a dorsal, ventral, and lateral shot of the specimen. Um, sometimes if there is a specific request for uh, something that is of interest to the, to the researcher, they might wanna look at the, a close up of the mouth or the dorsal fin, we'll shoot that as well. All right, so now we moved on to the, the x-ray room. So we're gonna take some x-rays of our fish. So we've got our, our x-ray source up here and we've got our digital collector pad down here. And we can place our specimen anywhere in between this. This, this um, yellow part here moves up and down. So we have a really small fish, we can move it up to the top. If we've got a larger one, we'll put it on the bottom. And this can actually, the, the whole apparatus moves back and forth. So if we have something really big, we can actually x-ray it in, in small pieces. Uh, so for, for this one, we've got a very tiny fish. So we'll get that on the pad and get it in place. And by putting it up here close to the x-ray source, this sort of works as a projector. Um, so the, the small little fish will be projected almost the size of the pad down here, which gives us a lot more de detail on the specimen. And then once we're ready, we'll close this door, head out of the room, and we control everything by a computer that's on the, on the other side. Now we're in the Greenfield 3D Imaging Lab here at the Academy. Uh, the computer that you see next to me was purchased through funds from the OVERT project, which is short for Open Vertebrate. 
It's an NSF-funded project to do CT scans of every vertebrate species uh, that we have in collections. We don't have a CT scanner here at the Academy, um, so we've had to send our specimens out to other institutions to have scanned. Uh, but all those scans come back to us, we have access to not only our specimens, but the other specimens from the project on a site called morphosource.org. Um, you can access anything there for free, um, as long as you have the software to be able to manipulate the data. Uh, the, the software that we're working with was actually purchased through funds um, through the Greenfield Center um, that is stationed in the library, but we have a number of different uh, sort of satellite areas in the museum that have to do with exclusively imaging. Um, so it's kind of a hybrid model of funding, but uh, lets us do a lot of really interesting stuff. So that really tiny fish that I, have, that I just photographed and x-rayed, we also sent out as part of this project to have a, a CT scan done. Um, so you can see on the screen here that we get some really high resolution imagery from that CT scan. And you can see a lot of detail here. The other great thing is that we didn't have to do anything to the specimen as far as preparation uh, to get a look at that skeleton. Uh, we can get a, get a look through the x-ray, but we don't get a three-dimensional representation of it. And the, the CT scan comes in in these slices. So we can actually slice through our specimen and see all of the structures internally. And as you can see, in some of these areas, you see a little bit of color. Those are areas where I've actually gone in and pulled out individual bones. And I'll just turn off our main model here, and you actually see those individual pieces that we've segmented out. So you can actually do a virtual dissection with the software without having to do anything to the specimen. Um, so it's completely non-destructive, which is really useful when you've got rare specimens, uh, type material, which are the, the specimens that new species are described from, um, or really small things. It's, it's tough often to prepare a skeleton or sometimes even a clear and stained specimen from those particular specimens. All right, so now we're in one of our visitor labs. Uh, this is exactly as it's described, a, a lab for visitors. Uh, we often have researchers coming in from, some from the U.S., some from Philadelphia. Others are coming from all over the world. We get a lot of uh, South American visitors because we have a, a strong collection of neotropical fishes. And they'll come here for sometimes a few days, sometimes a couple weeks. We've had researchers here on postdocs who've stayed for six months or so. Uh, so their, their visits vary and the amount of work that they get done here varies as well. But uh, it's, it's a great place for them to come and see our specimens, be able to take measurements, uh, take photographs of things that they themselves are interested in, um, look at our skeletal collection, um, like these guys here. Uh, we have a, a, a fairly large dry skeleton collection. And these are really good for, uh, if you don't have a CT scan and can't uh, manipulate it that way, a dry skeleton is a great stand-in for that. Um, in fact, it's what we used to use before CT scans were available. The only downside to these is that in order to prepare the skeleton, obviously you have to destroy the specimen, which is what makes CT scans um, somewhat more attractive when you've got rare specimens or things that you don't have a lot of in the collection. Um, other things that researchers can do while they're here, um, we've had parasitologists come in who've actually taken our fish and dug through them under scales in the mouth and looked for parasites. And one of the most important things that our, our visitors do for us is they identify our specimens that aren't necessarily identified to a species. In our collection, we have a lot of things that we've been able to identify to a genus or to a family. And we get a lot of visitors, especially PhD students who have lived one little niche of, of fish diversity for years and know exactly what they're looking at and can come in, very quickly identify things that we don't have IDs for and get those IDs correct. The other important thing for them coming in is that they'll often find new species in our collections. We've had fish, our, our fish have been sitting on shelves for literally hundreds of years and you can come in and find a new species just on that shelf. You don't need to go out and to some remote location to find a new species. They're often in museums already on the shelves. It's just that the right person hasn't come through and looked at those fish yet. The reason that we are so accommodating to our visitors is because they do so much for us and we are so happy that we can do so much for them for their research and continuing on the science. In the visitor lab, we saw some of the skeletons in our collection. The way that we prepare those skeletons is with our beetle colony here behind me. Uh, this is a small domestic beetle colony. We'll take the, uh, the fish, cut off as much of the flesh as we can, 
dry those out under a hood and then put them in with the beetles. And you'll, you'll see a lot of the adults on the top crawling around. They don't do a bulk of the eating. They're mostly there just to mate and lay eggs. So we have more larvae to go in there. The larvae are what really do all of the cleaning of the skeletons. There's five different instars, all different sizes. They all kind of get into all the little nooks and crannies and get all the flesh out of there so that we have these nice clean skeletons that we can um, do research on. All right, so now we're here in the cleared and stained collection in the, in the ecology department. Here we've got preps that are done where we take a fish, stain it with a red dye for the, that stains the bone, a blue dye that stains the cartilage, and then it's put into a trypsin enzyme digestion that uh, helps to digest away the flesh. And then uh, we add some other chemicals like peroxide, things like that, that will then clear out the specimen and let us see through it so that we can see the skeleton that way. Um, this one here is a, a small example of a bony fish that has that red dye on the bone. If you can see it through the, through the glass here, there's a little bit of blue in there that it's gonna be the, the cartilage that's in between the bones and, and supporting other areas. And then these guys here, these are uh, small ratfish. These are a cartilaginous fish, which is why you see no red in there. Uh, these are only stained blue because the skeleton is completely made out of cartilage. These are great preparations as well. Um, great for looking at skeletons. You can dissect these out, pull pieces out as you need them. But again, these are destructive. So if you've got something that you can't really sacrifice to make a cleared and stained specimen like you, like you would with a skeletal specimen, um, you might want to go back to the CT option or an x-ray. But again, these can be really beautiful um, and make for some, some really, really nice uh, photos when we have to send those out. Thanks for listening in and learning about how we use our specimens here at the Academy of Natural Sciences. We have over a million and a half fish in the collection, so I really need to get back to work and get back to it.